get your fly paws off my truck. Hi. So it's the weekend. I intended to do the subwoofer today, but um, it rained. So, gee, you're not going to be able to see this, but look at these flies. They're everywhere. Spring is definitely, definitely here. Um, so since it rained, I'm not going to have enough time to do the subwoofer. But uh, I think I'm going to play around with Forescan and see if we can make the sound system sound a little better with that. Let's get going. Okay, so before we get going here, let me give you like the 30,000 foot view so we understand what the heck we're actually doing. Um, so as you may or may not know, modern day vehicles have modules. Uh, modules are just something that take inputs from sensors and make decisions on what to do with them. The Bronco has tons and tons of modules. There's a module for the engine, there's a module for the audio system, there's a module even for the door latches and door windows. Um, those modules talk to each other on something called the CAN, which is a controller area network. Uh, these controller area networks are how modern vehicles function, they're how airplanes fly, how ships sail, assembly lines, anything mechanical that interfaces with the real world in some way is usually communicating with, e with each other on a controller area network. Forescan is a piece of software that talks to that control area network, or networks, sometimes there's multiple networks. The Bronco it has, I believe, six networks that are all interconnected with the gateway module. So Forescan allows us to talk to that control area network, and using that capability, we can set certain flags on the modules to program them in a way to get them what we want to do. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, I don't really intend for this to be a Forescan tutorial. Uh, there's plenty of videos on that already, but if you if you want me to make one, let me know. Uh, CAN networks are kind of my thing, so I'll be happy to do one if you want it. So the first thing you'll need is a Windows laptop. Doesn't have to be powerful, just needs to be Windows. I know the very first question is probably going to be, can I use a Mac? The answer is yes if you still have an Intel Mac and you're willing to install Windows on it. If you have the new Apple Silicon devices, um, no can do. You'll also need an, an adapter. This is the OBD-Link EX. This is the adapter that Forescan recommends. Or if you don't want to use Forescan's tools, you can use a J2534 adapter. If you're curious what J2534 stands for, it's just the it's the name of the communications protocol that vehicles use. It's mandated by, I believe, the U.S. government as well as the Society of Automotive Engineers. Um, so you just need an, a standard J2534 adapter that will talk on that network and allow you to program the modules. All right, let's get going. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and this is probably not dump water everywhere that would be nice what I'm gonna do is use a battery tender and the reason for that is simply because I'm making a YouTube video and this is probably gonna take me like an hour to shoot and when you program the vehicle you don't want the engine running so there's a chance your battery voltage is low if you have a good battery and you're confident in the battery this is completely unnecessary if you have a bad battery Probably a good idea. And positive. And negative. The negative hookup, this is the battery control module. For the negative, you wanna hook it on the, uh, not straight on the battery, you wanna hook it on this side. And the reason for that is because the battery control module keeps track of the health of your battery and you want it to know that you're actually charging the battery. And it's set to AGM, which is good. Ford has an AGM battery in here. So if I turn it on. Nope. 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 Go away. Go away. 
should have a decent voltage. 12.2, cool. All right, we're set. All right. Take my adapter, plug it in. All right, where's my bucket? Let's go get my bucket. My bucket is wet. So if you watched my last video, uh, at the very end I said, um, yeah, just run the kicker auto setup and everything should be good with the amplifier. There's instruction in the manual, it's pretty easy. Turned out not to be the case. Uh, I had to mess around quite a bit with Forescan to get this to actually sound decent. So I figured what I'll do first is just show you the audio settings as it pertains to everyone. So anyone can use it regardless of what amplifier they have. And then uh, near the end of the video, I'll show you what I did specifically for the kicker key. All right, so let's just jump into it. Let's go ahead and launch Forescan. Um, if this is the first time you've launched Forescan, it should mention, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the connect button down here. Make sure, just like it says, make sure your vehicle ignition is on. Do not start the vehicle, just turn the ignition on. Um, I'm gonna select my profile. If this is the first time you've launched Forescan, it'll say, do you want to create a new profile? The answer is yes. And then again, this is not a, a Forescan tutorial. So let's just jump straight to programming. What we care about this time around is the ACM. There it is right there. Hit play. Yep. All right, so the two blocks we care about are the first two here, 7270101, 7270101.2. And you'll see that it's grouped into, each configuration line is grouped into three hextets. Um, and each of these values are a hex number, again, zero through nine, A through F, if you're not familiar with hex numbers. And you can change these values to uh, change how the ACM operates. So this right here is my as-built configuration. The easy one that I'll just jump to right away is the last two of the first hextet in 0102. That is your EQ setting on the, on the um, ACM. I don't know about the B&O package, but on the standard package, there's only one EQ setting. Uh, 01 is if you turn it on, Zero, zero, you turn it off. So if you want a flat EQ out of the Bronco, uh, change it to zero, zero. I mentioned this in my previous video, but the the default configuration, 01 here, the back pod speakers have a uh, high pass filter applied to them, and that's just to help them sound better. Um, so if you upgrade to six and a half or six and a quarter speakers, and you want to get rid of that high pass filter, just change it to zero, zero. Now for 0101, this one's a little bit more complicated. So the third digit here in the first hextet configures uh, the front left speaker as well as the front amplifier. There are various values. If you set it to two, the factory configuration is to turn on the speaker and it's set in what Ford calls a speaker plus tweeter configuration and that's because the front two channels are shared. So the six and a half, now I have a six and three quarter down there, but the six and a half speaker and the four inch on the dash, speaker tweeter. You can also set it to just speaker if you want, or you can set it to just tweeter. I'll put those values on the screen and you can also disable it completely. Just depends what you need. Uh, the last digit in the first hextet is for the right speaker and the center speaker, obviously, the Bronco doesn't have a center speaker, so it's disabled, but I'll list the values out um, in case you need to change it. You probably will not change these first two uh, because they're appropriate for most people's setups. Now we jump on to the second hextet. The first digit on the second hextet controls the amplifier for the rear pods, as well as the left rear pod speaker, whether you turn it on or off. By default, 
Ford has it set as a tweeter since it's a four inch speaker. If you rip it out and you put in like the Mabet pods and you put in a bigger speaker down there, you can change it to a full range speaker and it will give it a little bit more juice. And this digit, the second digit in the second Hextet controls the rear right pod. And if you have a 2013 and probably later, it's only 2013 right now, so I don't know what 2024 Broncos will have. But if you have a 2023, it will also control the speaker configuration. If you have a 2023, you know this. In December, Ford stopped shipping Broncos with a subwoofer. Um, and a lot of people, what they're doing is they're taking the Ford Fusion subwoofers, they're plugging them into the Bronco, adding a speaker, and then they're, they're able to get a factory-like sub setup. Um, so, again, values on screen. If you need to change it, there's the values. Once you've changed it to what you need to be, in my case, the only thing I'm changing is the EQ, you just hit right. And like it says, cycle the ignition. Okay, that's it. Once you're done programming, hit the stop button, hit the disconnect button, and you're good to go. What? Ayoya. 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 I don't know what ayoya means. Oh, yeah. All right, bye. Um, it's obviously late. It's dark. I'm going to go put some kids to bed. Uh, in the morning, I'll come back and I'll explain why I picked the settings that I did for the Kicker Key 200.4. If you don't care about that stuff, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Down in the description is all my contact info as well as helpful links. For everyone else, I will catch you in the morning. Bye. Again? What is up with you guys? Get, get off. This is not your playpen. Morning. So, more rain last night? Let's get back into it. Alright, quick recap for those who haven't followed along. Um, I've done two videos on this upgrade project so far. First one, I swapped out all the factory speakers with Kicker KS series speakers. In the second video, I installed uh, this guy right here. That's the Kicker 200.4 amplifier. Uh, the reason why I got it, other than the fact that it's highly recommended by a lot of people on the Bronco forums, um, is because it has an auto EQ function. And the gist of it is, is that they give you a little speaker that you stick on top of your headrest and then hit a button and it will analyze the interior of your vehicle and set an EQ, EQ curve set for your vehicle, which in theory will make it sound a lot better. Now I ran this auto setup after I shot the last video and it sounded like garbage. Um, so after some fussing around with it for a few hours, I've come to realize that the reason why it sounded like garbage is because of the factory EQ setup. So what I did is, what I did yesterday, you saw that already, but what I did is I went in and I disabled the factory EQ settings and that's it. Everything else I left the same. So now there is a flat signal coming out of the factory ACM that gets piped into the kicker amplifier and then the kicker ampl amplifier sets an EQ that's appropriate for my vehicle and it makes it sound a lot better. So let me show you how that works. Okay. Eight millimeter, I believe, is what I need to get that undone down there. This is the speaker, by the way, that you plug into the amp. I installed the amplifier. I don't need that anymore. I installed the amplifier down here. It's right there. It's plugged in right there. Okay, we're ready to go. The headset or the speaker itself goes up here and then roll up the windows and get going. So from here, it's just following the instructions in the manual for the kicker amplifier. Um, they want you to close all the doors, all the windows, and you also need a device to play uh, pink noise from. 
So I'm using my phone for that. Make sure you go into your phone settings and disable the equalizer on your phone. That'll be important to make sure your, your phone's not adding anything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I will say the first time that I did this, I did not read the instructions and I sat in the car while it was doing its calibration. Bad idea. Don't do that. It's really loud. So it's pretty simple. You just got to start pink noise um, and then hit the button on the speaker to get started. There we go. Now we wait. Now, if your auto setup fails, uh, don't get discouraged. Mine failed a few times because of these stupid birds that are in the trees making a racket. And then now it's failing because my neighbor down there has got a lawnmower going. So, um, the first time I did this, I had to do it in the middle of the night, like 9 p.m. I probably will have to do the same thing. Oh, I should go get coffee. Happy sounds. Sweet. That's it. Again, if you want to talk to me, Ragnar Khan on Bronco 6G Bronco Nation. Feel free to send me a message, whatever you need. I'll help. And that's it for now. Next time you see me, hopefully I'll be installing the subwoofer. And then my Bronco can finally stop being in pieces. All right. Bye, guys. Later. Freaking get off. Jeez. Go away. My Bronco.